Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do my introduction first before I get too carried away. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new here, I talk about things fountain pen related and stationery, uh, occasionally artwork and sometimes books. But for today it's going to be fountain pens and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate all the support and warm and welcoming comments. All right. Today's video, as I was starting to say prematurely in my intro, I'm really getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited about some of the things that are going on, but hopefully you guys are too. And one of the things that is going on today will be a de-stash video. I'm going to go over the fountain pens that I'm going to de-stash. I'm also going to be posting them on Instagram with the prices. I'm not going to go into the prices here. If you're interested in any of the pens, let me know. I'm not going to be able to get them out um, until like the second week or so of March. I'm gonna let these pens kind of stay out there for as long as they can possibly stay out there. I really wanna get rid of all of these pens so that I can buy new pens to review on this channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna do the ones that are loose because I have so many of them. I couldn't get them all into this 20 case. Okay, the first pen that I have is the Faber-Castell Loom. Um, I love this pen. It was one of my earlier purchases, and it writes beautifully. Um, this is what it looks like. This one is in a fine point, I do believe. Yeah, this is a fine point nib. It actually writes very, very well. It will have the converter in it. I do believe I have converters in it. So there's a Faber-Castell converter in this one. Um, so this one will be up for sale. This is a great writer. Um, really, it's a solid workhorse. So can't go wrong with that one. Um, I do have a couple of Jin Hao 82s for sale. I'm gonna sell, sell these as a pair. Um, so the only thing that I'm kind of doing, the reason why I'm doing is these are fairly inexpensive. Um, I am going to be able to ship to U.S. and Canada. Canadian shipping will cost you a little bit more than U.S. I'm going to do a flat rate of $5 for U.S. shipping, and I'm hoping to do Canadian shipping for about $7 or $8. Um, so I am going to ask you guys to chip in a little bit extra for shipping. These are very inexpensive, so I understand if nobody in Canada wants these, you might be able to get them cheaper. U.S., I'm going to sell these um, two for one so and they do have cartridge converters in them and they're both I do believe from mine these are both fine nibs for that one and for this one I also believe this is like the orange mango this one as well um, so that one those two are going to also be on sale two for one um, I'm going to get rid of my Estherbrook special edition. I think this was latte version. Sorry about this. This is a junior pocket. It came out a few years ago. I don't think they have it anymore. This one is in a fine nib and it also has the converter in it. And the reason why I'm getting rid of, like I said, these pins is like I'm just not reaching for them anymore. So I want to kind of get rid of them. Um, next up, I have the Jin Hao. I think this is the X750. I tend to use these pens for shimmer ink and sheening ink. Um, so I'm just really, really, um, they're juicy. This is a juicy writer. I'll tell you that much right there. It does have a converter inside of it, but I'm selling this one as well. That's a snap click. It's not a twist. My Banu Luminous. Um, I am going to get rid of this pen. I'm not reaching for this one. I actually have a Minima that I actually like better than I like this one. Um, this pen is in great condition. It is a fine pen. I think this is a fine. And also it has a converter in it as well. Um, so there's that. And this one is, like I said, it's for sale. So there's that one I will be putting up. Next, I have the Jin Hao uh, X159. This is a, a dupe of the Mont Blanc Miserstruck. 
I think it's the 145. Um, I'm not reaching for this pen. It does write really, really well. It has a huge nib on it, as you can tell. This one is in the colorway of blue. This one would probably be better like the other Gen House to sell domestically in the US just because they're fairly inexpensive. I have a Sailor Profit for sale. This has a steel nib, not a 14 karat gold nib. I really liked the fact that it had a Fude nib. I was going to use it for drawing, but again, I'm not reaching for it. Um, so I am going to also put this one up on sale. This is a fairly small, um, pen so it's great for a drawing kit if you like to urban sketch um, you might want to try to check this pen out I don't know if you can get the food a nib anymore I bought this a while ago you probably can on Amazon but I am also getting rid of that one as well good starter pen for anybody who's looking to try food a pens I also have my Nima Sen I bought this pen actually in Germany um, and it is a great demonstrator pen good um, uh, good size ink capacity on that one. So that is another pen that I'm selling. I am getting rid of my little pen design. Um, this is a hand turned, I'm sorry, I keep up bumping my can, um, camera. It's a hand turned acrylic. It has a Yovo nib and it's a fine. I am going to get rid of this one. Okay, so those were the ones that were loose that I couldn't fit into my case. And here's the ones that are still in the case. Um, starting left to right, I've got my Calero in blue, and this pen is in a stub, so if anybody wants to try a high ink capacity Opus 88 Calero, they can do that. I do like Opus 88s for traveling because they do have a vacuum uh, filling mechanism, so they don't, you know, usually burp when you're um, traveling by air. Caveco, I am getting rid of my Caveco demo pen student as well. Again, not reaching for this pen. It is in a fine nib, I do believe, and I will definitely have it posted up on my website. And yeah, it's going. Another Caveco that's going is the Caveco Original. Um, again, this is more of a pocket pen. I am getting rid of this pen. It writes fine, but I'm going to let it go just because I didn't find myself reaching for it. And this is on the thinner side. So if you have smaller hands, um, this might work for you. And it's great to like stick in a journal because of the slimness in the barrel. My one of two vintage pens, this is an Aurora um, pen. I bought this, I think two years ago used off of Etsy, it writes fine. Um, it uses a converter, I think I have a converter in here. Yes, I have a converter. Um, it's a hooded nib. Again, I like this pen, but even though it's a fine because it's a Western fine, it writes too juicy for me. So if you like a juicy writing fine nib, that might be the pen for you. Again, because of its slim size, it's going to be really a good pen for like sticking in a journal. I have a Sailor Le Cool. I bought this from Endless Pens a few years ago. This one has a fine steel nib in it, or this actually might be a medium fine, I'm sorry. It's a medium fine, I do believe. And this one, again, is um, about the same size, if not the exact same size of a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. It's just with a steel nib and not the 14 karat gold nib. Okay, next up, I have the Platinum Nice in Rose Gold. I am not reaching for this pen, so I'm going to get rid of it. It is a Platinum 3776, so it does have a 14 karat gold nib. So the price on this is going to be a little bit higher than um, the other more inexpensive brands. I am not haggling on price on this. It's a very, very reasonably priced pen. Um, so if you're interested, um, you're interested. Then I have the Monte Verde Rose Gold. This one has a flex nib, a fine flex nib. And this one is also for sale. Up next. Now this one 
did not take last year and it might not take this year. But this is a Y Studio pen and it's a 100% brass nib pen. I like the pen, I love how it writes. I did personalize it so you might not want my initials on it, which is fine, I, I totally understand. But I am selling it and it's a beautiful writer. Conklin, okay, this one also has a nice stub nib. This is the Conklin, it's called the Empire. This has kind of a magnetic seal um, cap on it. I love the colorway. I love the fact that it's a nice juicy stub nib. Um, great for anybody who wants to do hand lettering or calligraphy work. Once again, just not reaching for it. R writes perfectly fine. Okay, this is another one of three 14 karat gold nibs that I'm selling. This is a, is this the Platinum or this is the Sailor? This is the Platinum 1911. Small pen um, on the thinner side. It has a, oops, hold on just a second. Let me double check. I know I should have had my cheat sheet with me. I'm just gonna come around and grab it because I can't remember. One has one nib and the other has the other. Um, okay. Um, the Platinum, this 3776, this Platinum 3776 actually has a music nib on it. So if anybody writes musical, you know, treble keys or whatever like that, this is a great pen and it does lay down a lot of ink. The nib is a specialty nib, just not reaching for it. So that's the second Platinum. And then this one is my Sailor 1911. And this one has a zoom nib on it. Let me make sure this is the Sailor and I didn't get them too confused. I'm sorry, the last one, got it confused. This one is the Sailor. And this Sailor has in it, I've got them out of order. This one has a zoom nib on it. And this one is the Platinum with the music nib on it. And this pen is absolutely stellar, but not reaching for it. Um, higher price because again, the Platinums and the Sailors, except for the LeCool, are 14 karat gold nibs. All right, moving onward and upward. I am selling my Pelican M200. Um, I bought this a few years ago. This is a pocket size pen. It's fairly small. It's got a piston fill window. And yeah. It is a 14 karat gold nib, so that's up for sale. This pen, the Emotion, I'm kind of gone back and forth on whether or not I'm gonna keep it. It is a beautiful writer as well. Um, really, really super smooth, heavy. So if you like a pen with some heft to it, this would be the pen for you. It's got really good balance. It writes really, really well. Again, no complaints on any of these. It's just not reaching for them. Uh, Pilot Explorer, this is a juicy one. I tried this one when I wanted to figure out what a medium nib would write with with Pilot. Um, I think this nib is similar to the Metropolitan, which is also up to sell, up for sale. Um, and it can take a converter, but it doesn't have one in it. I will be putting that up. Next up, I have my Pilot Metropolitan. This was one of the very first fountain pens I bought. I, I'm not using it, so it's up for sale as well, and this one is going to have on a fine nib. All right, another Caveco. This is the Dia. This is a smaller pen. It's kind of like the original in size. They're very similar in size. One's got gold. The Dia is just a smudge bigger than the original. Again, beautiful writing experience, just not reaching for it. Um, this one is a very inexpensive, <laughs> nondescript pen that I was going to use. Again, it has a Fude nib on it, and I was using it for drawing, but I'm not reaching for it. And then I've got another two for one on the Jen House, and I can interchange the color. So if you liked the colorways, of any of these, I'll do two for one, just let me know, but it's gonna be first come, first serve. Um, they're, again, fine nibs. 
I do believe on all of the Gen House that I have. So those will be up for sale. Then I'm going to uh, take off the um, out of my collection the Lamy Studio. Um, this pen has a metal section grip, which never bothered me um, at all. It has a very fine 1.1 stub nib in it. And again, I think there's a cartridge converter in here with all of these. So unless I say otherwise, I think all of them have cartridge converters in them. The Parker IM I have um, also for sale. And this one is another one of those Western juicy fine writer kind of pens. Beautiful, good weight, good balance. Um, that's also up. And then lastly, I have two Twisbees that are up for sale. I have the Tris, uh, Twisby Diamond 580 AL Impression Blue. Um, these pens do have a aluminum grip section. And this one I do believe is a fine and that's going to be up for sale. And then lastly, I'm selling my Twisby Extra Fine and Iris. Um, the nib is a little finicky, so you might find that you need to smooth it or tune it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I found that the nib was not to my liking at all. Um, I love the ink capacity and I love how big the nib unit is on here, but it will be on sale for a discount. All right, guys, that is all that I have. I hope um, if you have any questions, let me know down below. I will be, um, like I said, I'll be taking feedback from people first come, first serve. Um, if you're interested, let me know and I will get the pins out as soon as possible. I'm traveling towards the, the following weekend later in the month of February, so I won't be able to do anything until I get back from a, a work trip um, in early March, so I'll start sending them out as soon as I get back from that. But that's it for today. If, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.